Welcome to Hollywood Headlines. I'm your host, Annika Vicky. Today, we've got your top celebrity gossip, a national anthem performance that went horribly wrong, and Billboard's top 10 songs out right now. Stick around, Hollywood Headlines starts right now. Welcome to Hollywood Headlines. <laughs> Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines. I'm your co-host, Zach Ballin. It's the separation pop culture fans didn't exactly see coming, but are not too surprised to see happen. Jennifer Aniston and Justin Thoreau are going their separate ways after almost three years of marriage. Recently, rumors have been swirling that their relationship was on the brink, and sadly, there was a little truth to some of those stories. The couple released a joint statement on Thursday, clearing up any confusion that this split was less than amicable. But fans are still a bit puzzled. So that was, what was the true cause of the split? Here's something we know about the couple's split. The couple could never fully agree on where they wanted to live. Justin wanted to stay in New York permanently, whereas Jennifer wanted to stay in her $21 million home in Los Angeles. Another clue? Justin was nowhere to be found around the time of Jen's birthday and has not been seen in any of her photos. The last time the couple was seen together was around New Year's when the two went off to Cabo for a vacation. Another huge deal breaker for the two was that Jen likes to stay private and Justin would much rather hit the pavement and do everyday things on his own. The couple released a joint statement saying, uh, we are two of the best friends who decided to part ways as a couple, but look forward to continuing our cherished friendship. Normally, we would do this privately, but given that the gossip industry cannot resist an opportunity to speculate and invent, we wanted to convey the truth directly. Whatever else is printed about us that is not directly from us is someone else's fictional narrative. Above all, we are determined to maintain the deep respect and love that we have for one another. And they were seen taking the Backstreet Boys concert together on Saturday. The pair was caught by a fan, Niner Girl 6, who hit up Twitter to share videos of the pair dancing, singing along, and joking around with each other to the sound of the boy band in the Access Theater VIP section at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. In the videos, both Haley and Niall can be seen getting down to the boys' hit song, I Want It That Way. At one point, AJ was seen even comes up to the One Direction member and sings with him. For the possible date night in Sin City, Haley opted for a plungy black top and jeans, while Niall wore a laid-back plaid shirt and jeans. A source confirms that after the duo hit the concert up at AXS nightclub, they sat together at a stage table with a few friends, sipping on cocktails and listening to a set done by Diplo. Bachelor in Paradise's Carly Waddle and Evan Bass have welcomed their first child together, a daughter named Isabella Evan Eveline Bass. The couple took to Instagram stories on Thursday evening to share little Isabella's birth story. In a statement released by the new father, he said, It was a perfect birth, no problems at all. We were supposed to induce her today, but Carly's water broke 15 minutes before our alarm went off, so Bella is setting her own birthday. Carly is recovering well, and the baby has had her eyes open for hours. I cried a lot during the birth. We are smitten and cannot stop kissing, cuddling, and adoring her. While this was Waddell's first child, baby Bella joins big brothers Nathan, Liam, and Ensley, Bass's three sons from a previous relationship. The reality TV stars found love on season three of Bachelor in Paradise, Ultimately returning to Puerto Velarada, Mexico for a wedding ceremony that was televised in June 2017 and officiated by host Chris Harrison. Wells Adams served as a groomsman while Carly's best friend from her season of The Bachelor, Bachelor Jade Tolbert, 
was a bridesmaid. Carly recently posted on social media saying she's the sweetest little thing. We love her so much already. The boys got to come and meet her. They were so, they were so cute. They all got to hold her and she loved them so much. Everyone is talking about Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez being back together. Justin invited his on-again father Jeremy Bieber's wedding. The wedding took place in Jamaica. Justin picked up Selena in a private jet and they arrived first thing in the morning to Montego Bay. The couple spent the day with Bieber's family at the resort, catching up and getting ready for the wedding. Selena gets along great with Justin's family as seen by the interactions throughout the day. Justin's cousin shared some cute selfies with the Wizards of Waverly Place star before the start of the wedding. As a Jelena couple, they definitely are not shy about their showing their affection for one another. The couple was spotted on a lunch date expressing an enormous amount of PDA. The couple continued their vacation together in Jamaica after the wedding. The Bachelor's journey to find love is winding down. On Monday, we got a look at the hometown dates. Ari's top four ladies include Kendall, Lauren B, Tia, and Becca K. Ari was able to meet all of their families and learn a little bit about where they come from. First up was a trip to Los Angeles to visit Kendall's family. For the first part of the date, she took Ari on a tour of a taxidermy storage room. Ari told the cameras that taxidermy really isn't his thing, but he's still having fun. After their date, they go to Kendall's house, where we find out that Kendall has a twin sister named Kylie. Kylie tells Kendall that she doesn't think she is ready to get married because she barely knows the guy. Next up was Tia's hometown in Arkansas. Tia takes Ari to a racetrack. After a fun day of racing around the track, the couples head back to Tia's parents' house. Tia's brother pulls Ari aside and has a private talk with him about his reputation and his true intentions with Tia. At the end of the date, uh, at the end of the date, it seemed like Tia's family really liked Ari. The third hometown was with Becca K in Minnesota. They have a date at an apple orchard. After their date, they meet the rest of Becca's family. Becca explains to Ari that when her dad died, her uncle Gary stepped in as a father figure. The date went well, and Uncle Gary and Ari ended up having a heart to heart. Last was Lauren's hometown in Virginia Beach. The two went horseback riding on the beach and ended the night at Lauren's parents' house. Lauren's family is a very conservative military family, and this made Ari nervous. Eventually, Ari gets Lauren's dad's blessing after having a long conversation about the military. After all the dates, Ari decided to send Tia home and is left with his final three women. Next week, there is a two-night bachelor special with, the, with women uh, tell-all on Sunday night and fantasy suites on Monday. This Is Us star Sterling K. Brown will be fulfilling his dream by making his debut on Saturday Night Live. He will be hosting for the very first time on March 10th. For his episode, Brown will be joined by musical guest James Bay. The 41-year-old actor was so excited that he posted on Instagram a countdown to the big night. Brown is so enthusiastic about hosting that he is already practicing his introduction. He posted an Instagram video of himself practicing the legendary SNL introduction in the mirror. He wrote a caption for the video sharing that being on the NBC show is truly a dream come true. I've watched SNL since I was a baby. To finally get to host is one of the more surreal moments of my life, but it's going to be awesome. It's been an exciting week for Brown, who is on a high after the Monsters box office success of Marvel, Marvel's Black Panther, where he plays Ninjobo, Eric Killamonger's father. Make sure to watch SNL on March 10th at 1130 to catch Sterling's performance. On Monday, Deadpool star Ryan Reynolds took to Instagram to thank the Children's Wish Foundation and the Make-A-Wish Foundation for introducing him to some very special families. His Instagram post featured a collection of photos of the kids who got to visit the set of Deadpool 2 with the caption, One of the best parts of playing the big red jackass is welcoming at, at Make-A-Wish America and at Children's Wish Foundation on the set. Deadpool kicked cancer in the taint, but these kids do it for real every day. These foundations make dreams come true for a lot of super brave kids. They also make dreams come true for their parents who just want to see their kids smile. In the same post, he also thanks the prop master for the movie for making the kids their own bamboo version of Deadpool's sword that Ryan Reynolds signed of the kids who received them. Deadpool 2 premieres in theaters May 18th.
On Tuesday, Grammy nominee Kesha announced that she has been forced to postpone the upcoming shows for her ongoing Rainbow Tour so that she can undergo knee surgery. During her February 9th show in Dubai, the singer fell and suffered an ACL tear in her knee. According to a statement, the 30-year-old will undergo surgery next week and will begin rehabilitation as soon as possible. So she is ready to co-headline her North American summer tour with Macklemore. As of right now, the tour is expected to kick off as planned on June 6th in Phoenix. Kesha is upset to have to delay the tour dates in Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, and Japan. The star, the star said in a statement, moving these dates is making me sick with sadness, but I will try to will this injury away, and it didn't work. I love you all, and I'll work every single day as hard as I can to recover and get back on stage as soon as possible. I'm so sorry, and sending love always. We hope the singer gets back on her feet soon. After the complete four-day weekend, the numbers for the Black Panther film are finally here. Early numbers indicate that the film would make between 100 million and 120 million during the opening weekend. Although the hype boosted the predicted amount to 170 million just a few days before, now it has been calculated Black Panther has made 242 million domestically and 427 million worldwide. Shattering box office records within the first three days, it has already hit 201 million. It is now the third highest gross in history for a four-day opening weekend. As some on Twitter pointed out that Marvel's late, latest had easy out, easily outpaced the DC's most recent release, Justice League. Greg Foster, chief executive of IMAX Entertainment, said, Black Panther could help expand the film market in Africa and elsewhere. It's brought in people who traditionally haven't gone to movies because there's a message in Black Panther that says, this is a movie to support. Foster said the film is expected to continue to post powerful numbers in the U.S. and Canada this weekend. Analysts said it would grow an additional 100 million domestically this weekend. Driven by repeat business, it will likely be the number one movie domestically th Friday through Sunday, easily beating new arrivals, Paramount's science fiction thriller Annihilation, and Warner Brothers' R-rated comedy Game Night. Be sure to check out Black Panther in movie theater near you. And when we come back, we'll be talking about some of the worst celebrity performances of the national anthem that has ever happened. Stick around. Hollywood Headlines will be right back after these commercials. Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines. We are now going to be talking about the top 10 worst national anthem performances of all time. Now, getting booked to sing the Star Spangled Banner at major events is an honor for any artist, but many try just a little too hard to put their own memorable stamp on it. Whether it be changing the arrangement or hitting notes way out of their range, we went and we found the 10 worst performances ever. Coming in at number 10 is Kerry Hilson back in 2010. The R&B star had what it took to sing the song vocally, but unfortunately at an NBA game committed the worst crime of all and forgot all of the lyrics. And hit number nine on the list is a little bit more recent. In 2011, Christina Aguilera took the stage at Super Bowl 45. Even though the singer has a powerhouse voice, she ended up changing the words in the song's fourth line and merged it with the second line lyrics and do not even get us started on the final note of that song. Next. The next one on our list for worst celebrity national anthem performances comes from 2005 where R. Kelly tried to Marvin Gaye his rendition at a boxing match. His version got people talking but for all the wrong reasons, from the unnecessary use of hand claps to the even more unnecessary use of step dancers. This one was definitely one for the books that is the book of Do Not Try This Again. Aerosmith frontman Steve Tyler claims his spot at number seven on our list tonight. Even though his voice is perfectly suited for howling choruses, the singer took it a little too far by botching every single word during the 2012 AFC Championship Games. It had all the making of a potentially great national anthem performance. Super Bowl 40 back in 2006 was the first since Hurricane Katrina. The two, the two New Orleans... New Orleans heroes Aaron Newville and Dr. John were there to proudly represent their hometown along with soul queen Aretha Franklin. Sadly, by adding a gospel choir, many were left feeling perplexed and extremely uncomfortable. Coming at number five on the list comes from the NASCAR Ford 400 race in 2005. 
Grammy award-winning voice Scott Stapp from the band Creed butchered his rendition by growling through several notes and not even singing half of them correctly. After doing that several times, we know to never let him sing it again publicly. Counting down on the rest of the worst top 10 is none other than singer Michael Bolton. At a Red Sox versus Yankees baseball game in 2003, he invited the wrath of fans when he dared to peek at the lyrics written on his palm. Between that and the bizarre echo following his every line, this performance is considered an epic fail. If you've been living under a rock, then you, if you haven't been living under a rock, then maybe you've seen the tragedy that happened at the 2018 NBA All-Star Game this past weekend when Fergie sang the national anthem. The Black Eyed Pea singer gave one of the most creative renditions of the anthem we've seen in a long time. If the video you, if in the video you can see several celebrities quietly laughing as it happened, the internet instantly blew up, promoting Fergie to write the response, I love this country and honestly tried my best. Sorry, Fergie, a lot of us just have to disagree with that. Number two on the list comes as a little bit of a shock to many. Roseanne Barr took to the pitcher's mound back in 1990 at a San Diego Padres game. The TV star wanted to be obnoxious and it absolutely worked. She shouted half of the lyrics off key, grabbed her crotch and even spit on the pitcher's mound. For some reason, celebrities actually took a liking to this and we're not really sure why. And last but not least, the number one worst national anthem performance goes to Kat Doolina. The Dominican singer never quite recovered from this performance at the 2008 Dallas Cowboys game. She tries too hard to hit the notes that only divas can hit. She takes up us on a painfully bumpy ride of vocal runs and even forgetting half of the lyrics. The best part is she does it all with the belief that Sheik is killing it. Unfortunately, the chorus of boos at the end helped her realize a little too late. So looking at this list, I kind of disagree with some of them. Yeah, I, really do. I feel like I, I haven't necessarily like heard all the way through the first like maybe like 10 through five. When you get starting into like one through five, you got to question some of those yeah. choices. Um, I, I listened to number one and I'm like, this is bad. She when she gets the high notes, she sounds like she's literally screaming. Yeah. And I will say that like she does sound like she's screaming them rather than singing them, which is honestly humorous. Mm -hmm. But like it's better than literally screaming the entire song because you think you're funny. Exactly. And the fact <laughs> that she she wanted to be obnoxious and celebrities actually took a liking to yeah, it. Yeah. Even Madonna. Like said, defended her, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, this is decades later and this is a horrible performance. Why are you defending her? And honestly, it's like really weird thinking like Fergie's number three, which I think if we were going to do this, I think that Roseanne should be number one, Fergie should be number I two, agree. number one should be up. number three. But like thinking about it, like this Fergie thing happened and like everyone was like, what? But like there's worse. Yeah, and I, my friend actually sent me the link and said to watch it. So those are some <laughs> epic fails of the national anthem. But that is all the time that we have to talk about horrible national anthem renditions. But stick around when we come back. We'll be talking about the top 10 songs on the charts this week. Stick around. Hollywood Headlines will be right back. <laughs>
Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines. We now are going to take, be taking a look at the top 10 songs that are climbing the charts this week. Coming in at number 10 is Stir Fry by Migos. Next up on the list is All Stars, All the Stars, sung by Kendrick Lamar and SZA. The number nine song comes from one of his recent albums, Damn. Number eight on the top 10 list this week is one of a lot of female favorites' new songs. It is New Rules by Dua Lipa. The female empowered song talks about getting over exes. The number seven on the list is one of my personal new favorite songs. It is Meant to Be by BB Rexa featuring Florida Georgia Line. The country pop song just gets you in the mood about that. If things are meant to happen, they just meant to happen. Look Alive has claimed the number six spot on this week's music charts. The song by Block Boy BJ featuring Drake on the album Look Alive. <laughs> Getting to the halfway point on our list is the song Rockstar by Post Malone featuring 21 Savage. This song has been a little overplayed, but it is definitely standing its ground on the top 10 list. If you haven't guessed by now, yes, Havana is still on the list, and this week it stands at number four. The former Fifth Harmony singer is keeping her place on the charts. The song by Camilla Cabello features Young Thug. Number three on the list is also another favorite of mine. It is Finesse by Bruno Mars featuring Cardi B. The song, as Bruno Mars states, is a tribute to In Living Color, one of his all-time favorite TV shows. Well, this second to last song has been on the charts for a long time, and some of us, I'm sure, are sick of it by now. It is, of course, Perfect by Ed Sheeran. The recently engaged singer has had this song from his album Divide from for uh, quite some time now. And finally on our list this week is, drumroll please, God's Plan by Drake on his newest album, Scary Hours. The song has reached number one over the past few weeks, but who knows how long it will stay there. So I honestly, <laughs> I've probably heard half of these songs that yep. just like, just like on the radio or someone's playing them, but like from like names and like um, just whatever, like I couldn't except like maybe Havana and like Perfect couldn't, and Rockstar mm -hmm. couldn't tell you if I know the song or not. <laughs> I just think some of them on the list, such as Perfect, Havana, and Rockstar are extremely overplayed. Yeah. I hear them all the time, <laughs> whether they're played on the radio or in like the grocery store or so, just somewhere. I'm like, why are you still on the list? Get some new artists in here. I mean, <laughs> honestly, though, these lists, this is how these lists go. Like, mm -hmm. back, like, you think last year, Closer by the Chainsmokers. Oh, like, my God. Like, I love the Chainsmokers, but that song no. was on that list for literally, like, six or seven months. I do not like the Chainsmokers, <laughs> and I was just like, please, get off the list. I don't like you. Like, I don't want to listen to this song any longer. Like, but. I don't know if it has to do with, like, how they rank it or what, but, like, yeah, some of these songs end up just, they stay on there too long. Well, it goes by plays how many times that it's played by people on Spotify or like people on the radio how many people don't turn it off yeah. you know, stuff like that but I love I do love finesse I I, I think it's a really good song it gets See, me in I the don't mood. like I don't like Bruno Mars that oh much oh my gosh I love him or Cardi B that's Cardi the, yeah that's but I don't like either of them that much. So like, and then the song itself, I don't like. So mm -hmm. just three things that I'm just like, I don't. Yeah. Like, I don't see the hype about it. I do like the music. The music video is really cool, well, though. Yeah, it's a I will tribute. Admit, uh, yeah, I will admit that. Like, the music video is really cool, but like, I don't necessarily care for the rest mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> I do. Uh, New Rules and Meant to Be have been a few of my favorites. They've been on the list, and I like them because, you know, Florida Georgia Line is not some, you know, it's not like Drake or it's not like Ed Sheeran where. They're rising stars. They kind of just like yeah, were country time, and came out of nowhere. Last time we saw them was a uh, cruise from yes. how many years ago? Oh my ago? gosh! <laughs> and BB Rexa, we haven't heard from her in a little bit. I who is that? She. <laughs> uh, there's a song. I don't remember the name of it right now, but she had a song that came out like maybe a year or two ago. But still. Yeah. But Dua Lipa is. She's a brand new artist that came out of nowhere. She's a rising artist. Yeah, I have rules. heard actually have hit, heard a bit of her stuff, and I do really like her. Mm -hmm. She she came out of nowhere. She came out with new rules, and then she came out with um, I don't give a. <laughs> so I, I really her songs are very female empowered. Like I don't care, and it's. 
some of those songs are really get me in the mood. Yeah, she does like female empowerment songs actually well. And I mean like other stars like Kesha do too. And it just makes me think back to like when Megan Trainer tried to do oh like gosh, female her. empowerment <laughs> songs and like all of it was either like just trashing people or like I don't know, like I feel like so, like I like when artists are actually like do female empowerment songs, but they can do it with empowering and not having to trash other people. I agree. I definitely agree. But uh, that's all the time we have for you today for Hollywood Headlines this week. Uh, I'm your co-host, Zach Vallant. And I'm your host, Annika Vicky. Have a great week, Millersville, and come back next week right here on METV for some more Hollywood Headlines.